and welcome to the follow-up podcast. My name is Hayden. I am the worship director here at Arbor Church, and today I'm joined by Michael Solis, our children's director, and Cliff Tatama, our interim pastor and speaker from Sunday. All right, so I feel like I've been saying this every week. We're in changes, the series, and also literally in changes as a church. Um, but this week was a little bit different because we... For the past few weeks and changes, we've been doing more character studies. And correct me if I'm wrong, Cliff, we kind of viewed a couple different characters this week in this message. Yep. Yes. So could you just remind me and the audience, what was was a few of the names that we talked about on Uh, Sunday? We talked about Abraham. We talked about Noah. We talked about Joseph. uh, We talked about um, Samson. And then we talked about some of the New Testament, uh, just verses. Yeah. Yeah. So we focused on Old Testament characters, but then right. kind of contextualized with the New Testament. Um, this is, I feel like I've said this many times on the podcast, but this was one of the messages that you had talked about beforehand, right? Right. That you wanted to, to share with us, um, which is funny because uh, you'll be with us for another six weeks. Is that right? Yeah, six or eight. Yeah. So now we're hearing all these messages that you've been putting in your back pocket of one day. <laughs> He's been holding back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this next six weeks, it's only going to be the hits. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> no, no filler, <laughs> just straight hits. <laughs> you know what's funny about that is uh, the idea for this, and I actually taught a message similar to it, but when I started getting into it and really looking at it, it quite evolved. And I think by the time I was done, I thought, well... Um, it would have been nice to have done one I've done before and I could have just done it again <laughs> instead of redoing one completely. Yeah. I put as much time into it as if it was brand new, but yeah. it's all good. It's all good. Um, so obviously this message was developed a little bit differently because it's something that you've been working on. Um, was there any work in the manuscript that you had to do? Because obviously, I don't know if this was a standalone message originally when you were planning it or if it was always going to be part of this series. Was there any sort of work to kind of bridge where it started at to um, it working in the changes series. Yeah, uh, yeah, there was. I don't, um, I don't actually recall if it was uh, a standalone or what uh, the what I taught before on it. I think I've, I was captured originally by just those two words, but God, mm-hmm. and that God intervened so significantly, and so I kind of taught a message on that 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 had been I think quite some time back. And as we were thinking about changes. Then I thought of the fact that how every time we read that, there is a significant change taking place mm-hmm. every time you read about it in the Bible, and so, um, so that th- I thought that would be a really neat one to add two changes, and so I yeah. threw it kind of in the hopper as we were looking at different people and all that. But when I actually began to go through it, um, I saw yeah, it needed quite a bit of adapting from where the original concept was to yeah. to where we wound up with it on Sunday, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you um, you had quite a few verses, right? That was that fit that mold that you were looking for of, but God, um, can you again? If if I'm a listener who hasn't listened to the message, I would question why I'm even listening to the podcast. But for the people who might not have heard the message, um, <laughs> true story. What's the story behind these verses where we see the words "but God" and then yeah. Change so I, I think and that's where um, I think as we were thinking of changes and then and that's what got my got me thinking about you know the fact that as you read through the Bible I think those are two words that are um, they're not may not be the two most important words but when you yeah. put them together like that man they are hugely important and they're so important for anybody who has a walk with the Lord yeah but God so in when when they show up in the Bible, uh, particularly, well, actually, all the way through, God needed to intervene. Yeah, and so the but God is this is what was happening, mm-hmm. but God then came and then here is what happened thereafter, and so that applied to Noah, it applied to Abraham, it applied to Jacob, it applied to Joseph, uh, it applied to Samson, it applies to Cliff and to Michael. Mm-hmm. Um, when we see God, and that's what that's why I think the theme thing that that we kept running back to was. But God changes our circumstances for our good and His glory, mm-hmm. and He does that, and He does it thinking about it from uh, 
not just a temporal perspective, but even from an eternal perspective, I think even more importantly. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to do a quick plug for the prayer team right now as we're talking about this, because this is a common thing I, I believe I hear from folks on the prayer team. The prayer team, for those who are listening on the podcast, is such an amazing and so needed group of people in our community. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever's coming our way, you know, if it's cancer, but God, yep. let's pray. If it's a divorce, but God, let's yep. pray. If there's a, a, a problem at home, if there's an issue, if there's a thing, it's financial, uh, the prayer team, but God, we're going to pray right now. Yeah. And it is so cool to see. It's like, you know what? None of it is above God, so we're right. going to pray. Mm-hmm. So, but God, that stamp it really yep. makes sense to me, when it, when, mm-hmm. especially when we're talking about the prayer team. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good, Michael. And it's yeah. true. And, and uh, man, if somebody wants to grow their faith, that's a great place to become involved, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are, Michael and Cliff. Um, with these scriptures that you referenced on Sunday, we saw... Um, all of all of the characters had to first either go through or notice something is broken or disconnected in my life, right? And then we see in the scripture, but God dot 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 right does this changes this maybe changes their perspective. Um, do you think that is? maybe from our human perspective, the way things usually play out? Or do you think that is the preferred method that God would have for us, that we would go through and see our brokenness before he can change it? Because, you know, me thinking externally on these characters, God could have changed them and then shown them after the fact, right? But I'm curious, is that more for our own good inevitably that we need to see the brokenness before the change can happen? Do you want to ask okay. Me? I mean, I, I, okay, so I'm the, the resident children's minister. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I often think about these things through the eyes and ears of children, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I could go around and fix all the things in front of my kids so that they don't stumble, they don't hurt themselves. Mm-hmm. But I oftentimes, especially the older they get, I sit back and go, you know what? I'm going I'm to let them figure yeah. this one out. Mm-hmm. And if they don't get it, I'm there for them. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to make them fall too far. Mm -hmm. And as it relates to us, especially, I'm just going to own this one. When God does that kind of stuff, it brings me back to, and I think this applies to all of scripture, the heroes in our scripture, the, Mm -hmm. the stories. God just goes, I want you to know that I am God. Yeah. yeah. I want you to see that I am God. And you're going to go, you're going to get to do some things in your own strength, but you're going to run into walls where you're going to go, I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. And God's going to go, but God. (laughs) Right. And and they turn to God over and over again. And God says, here I am. Mm -hmm. That wall is nothing. And they keep going through the story. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of it for the, for your answer. Yeah. And I think, but I think it's also important to um, get the fact that to have a, but God moment, it does not require that uh, that we understand yeah. we're at a place, you know, that... So so in some of the st- cases of these stories throughout the Bible, they did nothing to get there. No. I mean, Noah didn't... Uh, it wasn't Noah's problem that caused all the problems, right? For for God to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a flood and wipe it all out. Yeah. Um, but God said to Noah, make the ark and then get in it and so forth and so mm-hmm. on. And the same thing with Abraham, the same thing with Joseph. Um, you watch him and you think... Geez, the guy didn't do anything to deserve yeah. this, you know. And 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 I gotta believe in his situation. I'm not sure he saw it. I'm not sure mm-hmm. he saw how or when God was going to intervene. Mm-hmm. He, but he did trust God. Yeah, and we know that, and he, we know he kept honoring God. And he honored God and he trusted God with the way he lived his life, in what seemed very dire and mm-hmm. extremely unfair circumstances. Yeah, and yet he wasn't. He didn't get mad at God. We don't read that anywhere where he's mad at God. I don't yeah. I believe he probably questioned a lot what mm-hmm. in the world's going on. Yeah. And then God moves after years. Mm. But the conclusion of it is as soon as a uh, here's the other key, as soon as a but God moment happens, our circumstances change mm. and it is for our good and it is for his glory. Mm-hmm. And so Joseph recognizes as such 
when after that but God moment happened. Mm-hmm. And so when his brothers come and are afraid he's going to get them back for what they've done to him, yeah. sold them into slavery and all, uh, he says, who am I, God? Yeah. No, but God, what you meant for evil, mm-hmm. but God meant it for good. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so he saw that in God's hand and, and then gives God the glory for it. So yeah. God changes the circumstances for his good. He's the prime minister. And for God's glory, he recognizes who it was that made all that difference for him. So, Yeah, I think... I think what's interesting is obviously there is um, somewhere there's evidence of of Joseph not being a perfect guy, right? But the, the right. version that we get, we really don't get to see a huge failure or let up. But what I think is interesting about Noah is we see it kind of in reverse, right? Sometimes when we see these characters in the Bible, they got their issues, God changes them or does something with them, and then it's all great afterwards. And we see with Noah kind of the opposite of... We didn't really have a whole lot of context about who he was before the ark. But then after, <laughs> he's been shown all the glory and wonder of God, and then he's getting drunk. He still and, got drunk, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I, But I think it's interesting because I think that, that using Noah kind of shows all of, all of the picture, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're walking away from some brokenness, and God's coming in, and it's going to be better on the other side. And then sometimes you're Noah, right? And you haven't had a whole lot of brokenness in your life. God uses you. You feel this connection with him. You're glorifying him. And then you stumble after the fact, right? right. You have this revelation or um, you get to see God in a different way. So I think that's what's cool yeah. about this message is you've kind of got different slices of life and different ways that the audience can connect with the message. So. Right. And I think, I think Hayden, that's one of the uh, significant factors of validity of the scriptures to me. Yeah. Is the fact that it doesn't paint its heroes without their warts. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just shows them the way they are, you yeah. know? And, and the beauty of that mm-hmm. is that w- we get to see what you, just what you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, that they're all human, and, they, mm-hmm. and not one of them doesn't make mistakes, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think of that in my life, and I think, wow. You know, uh, so sometimes we mess up and bring it on ourselves. Yeah. But if we lean into God with it, there is still, he still will change the circumstances for our good and his glory. Yeah. And I mean, I found that with my prison experience, you know, I, I screwed up, I messed up and, mm-hmm. uh, you wind up in prison and then it's not till later you go, but God, mm-hmm. but God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what I think is, uh, an interesting story is also, similar in a way to Noah is the story of Job, right? Of we have evidence before his story that he was a great dude, feared God, loved God. And then it was funny earlier this week, I was talking to somebody and they're like, I've always looked up to Job, his perseverance, never questioned God. And I'm like, where did you stop reading Job? (laughs) (laughs) After the first chapter. (laughs) There's a very explicit part of Job where he questions God and then God's like, all right, (laughs) I'm going to let you have it, Job. Um, But uh, in this message, when you're putting it together, did it start with finding the characters that you were going to observe and talk about? Or did you already have that one story and it was more putting together other supporting characters to add in. Actually, it started with the word study. Oh, okay. I just thought, where, how often does, but God show up? Yeah. What are the circumstances around that? So I just started doing a word study on that and seeing where it showed up and, and the circumstances and then saying, what, what are the Mm -hmm. uh, commonalities and what are the aberrations that are taking place there? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. And, and the end of it, uh, that was actually something I'd written it and was done with the message from my perspective and uh, had thought about it, gone over it several times. And um, mm-hmm. and then as I was just meditating on it and thinking about the things where it doesn't show up, but it's implied, mm-hmm. the but God, right? All those circumstances, all those thoughts that we tend yeah. to have, all the things that the enemy wants us to believe about ourselves that are not true— yeah, but we can begin to own there is a but God in there, and mm-hmm. He gives us the other side of that. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, and man, I started thinking about that, and I just started, just started writing down different things that 
I, I know from being a pastor of yeah. what, and from being my, my, a human being, you know, of, of the doubt, of the lack of peace, of, the, of all these different feelings that we can have at times. Yeah. And then, and, and I actually just started doing that, and then it started coming from both sides, you know. Yeah. Other ones were, here's what God promises. Here's what God says. Here's what, what's, yeah. the, what's the before that? Mm-hmm. And so that, and then but God, here's mm-hmm. a, so yeah. he promises a peace that passes understanding. Well, what's before that? That's that lack of peace, that yeah. place where we aren't at. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And for me, that was really exciting. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got very excited about it, but I didn't think it came across as well as I wanted it to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a question for you guys as mm-hmm. well. If, if someone is listening to the sermon from this last week and, and they come away from it going, man, I, in this situation in my life, whatever it may be, I need a but God moment. Yeah. What would you say to that? Mm. Well, just thinking about the people in the stories, I mean, not many of them were looking for a but God moment. I think Abram was, right, um, wanting to have descendants. But correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Noah was looking for one. Um Am I wrong on that one? Yeah, I, you know, I think I th- I think they were walking with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. So they uh, could expect that, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Even if they were doubting, they could expect that. And I think that's more of, uh, I think for me, it's more we can have an expectation of that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, other times, take uh, Jonah. It didn't. Say, it doesn't say but God. Yeah. In the book of Jonah, but it's there big time, right? But but Jonah was in the seaweed inside of the fish. Yeah. But God, and what was he doing before the but God moment? He was crying out. Mm-hmm. He was crying out. That's a, a full chapter of him acknowledging who God is and who He yeah. isn't, and uh, and then he gets that but God moment for him. So I think it's appropriate to live life both ways. One mm-hmm. meaning I can honor God living like um, Joseph did, I'm sure wondering, but not knowing when that mm-hmm. or if even that might happen. And then here it is and here it happens and, it, and mm-hmm. it, it all comes through. And then the other side of that being like Jonah crying out for that. And I think it's appropriate as believers for us to be in both of those places. Well, uh, go ahead. Oh, as you say, I love that you gave that example of Jonah because what a messy butt God. Right? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> what a gross experience oh, to have yeah. to go through to get to your butt God. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's very, um, I think it's very appropriate when we're talking about some of these things that we're looking for a butt God moment. Sometimes it could get messy till you get to that butt God. Yeah. I, I think what's so funny about Jonah is my, sheer lack of understanding of that story because um i mean i feel like i heard that story every year in children's church when i was a kid and it was always just you know it had to do with faith it had to do with you know following god and it was really just focused on ship whale back on land <laughs> and then i get to bible college and i read it and i'm like what is going on with jonah and this plant and like he hates nineveh like what is going i don't understand this story but um, one of the things I was going to say to your question, Michael, was I think when you read the Old Testament from either a young Christian perspective or just for the first time, it's really easy to identify the God of the Old Testament as this transactional God of like, mm. this person came to God, God did this for them, life's good, right? And Or they ask God for this or God blesses them, and it's really just this because I don't think we get as much context as we might like in the Old Testament of these people's lives of life was going this direction, God comes in, life is completely changed in an opposite direction. And what I like about Jesus in the New Testament is I think that he perfectly summarized what what the Old Testament God was trying to do with his people of, no, follow me and I'm going to take care of the rest you know, spoiler alert, it might not go as planned like the way that you thought it would go. But I think that the Old Testament, sometimes we can look at it and want that transaction of, I want that but God moment. You know, life isn't going well. And then Jesus and Paul and and all the New Testament teachers say like, yeah, that's a skewed way of looking at your relationship with God, right? And I don't think there's anything wrong 
with wanting a but God moment because sometimes life is hard and it's not going well and you're like, God, could you help me out here? Right. And I think he's constantly reminding us and he told us in the New Testament that he's not a genie in a lamp, you know? It's not come to me with your wishes and I'll see what I can do. It's follow me and I'm going to take care of you. You'll be in my hand. So, yeah. But yeah. I like that question. It's, it's, uh, I think it's tough to be in the middle of something and not want that but God moment. Yeah. God's <laughs> looking for the deeper heart and exactly. relationship yeah. versus just, I'm going to fix it so you can just keep going on. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a 27 year old man. I don't know God as well as I would like to, but, um, I think that's what God was wanting with some of those transactions in people's lives was please follow me, you know, like I will bless you, please follow me. And then he really got to see the heart of his creation of like, Oh, my creation is a little selfish and greedy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I thought that I could bless Uh, them and they would be like eternally grateful. But I think you got to learn quite a bit about humans. And I feel like we've kind of talked about this a little tiny bit in a totally different podcast, but when you think about any other relationship, if you will, when it comes to a deity out there, it's usually transactional, yeah. right? Yeah. I yeah. give you this sacrifice yeah. for the rain mm-hmm. or for the whatever, yeah. the sun. Yeah. Uh, and it's yeah. and, and God's approach is, no, I'm after your heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, yes, that's exactly right. And I think, I'm glad you brought that up, Hayden, because... It's a little bit of a rabbit trail, but yeah, I, I think it's, it is. Yeah. I think it's worth going down mm-hmm. because um, what what you were talking about in in how you view the Bible, this is something that I think is is critically important. In fact, believers and unbelievers alike who miss this cannot see God for who He is. Yes, we have to. You have to decide when you're going to begin at Genesis or wherever you want to start reading the Bible through. You've got to decide, is God truthful about who he is, his character? If you believe that is true, then that must influence how you read the entire thing. Mm. If you do not believe that's true, then you can wind up wherever you want, (laughs) right? Because you can see it from all kinds of different perspectives, but particularly the Old Testament. If you don't look at the Old Testament from Mm -hmm. what God's character is, from who what God says about who he is, then you can look at him at that as a, boy, he seems like he's an angry God. Yeah. Boy, it seems like he's, it seems like he is transaction orientated. It seems like he's a, just mad at people. It seems like Mm -hmm. he's looking for a reason to, no, 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 no. It, that, it can look like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any story can look like it isn't if you Mm -hmm. look at it from the wrong perspective. But if you understand, wait a minute, he's told me he's a God of love. Mm -hmm. He told me he loves his creation. He thinks it's good. He wants it in relationship with him. Now that changes how I see all of those different things and gives you a completely different view of those Old Testament characters and those stories. Yeah. So good. That's like a a golden truth nugget bomb right there. <laughs> so it's like if you if you got the sermon, you better get on the podcast. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's that is that's a whole other message, but it is well I'm glad you brought it up but, because yeah, man, we can get sideways otherwise. Because the the human struggle that has been in existence from creation is man wanting to be God and then realizing that they can't do it and they fall. And then they have this huge need for a God and you would think that'd be it, but it really is just a cycle. And if you look at your own life, you probably can see evidence of that as well. Of like, Mm -hmm. I can control every outcome. I can do all these things. And then sure enough, you're reminded that you're human. And then you right in that moment are like, man, I really do need a God and I'd have a God. But once things go well, I don't know if I need God anymore because I can control all the outcomes, right? <laughs> and, and that's exactly what you just said is yeah. the cycle you see, right? In that <laughs> yeah. Old Testament again yep. and again. And we look at it and go, and sometimes it's a it's a fairly short cycle. I mean, we have that happen in our own lives yeah. in a very short, compressed period of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we look at the Old Testament and we can see the nation of Israel having that. Sometimes it's as short as 40 years. Sometimes we're thinking, my gosh, they went off the rails again. What is wrong with them? And then when you stop and look at it, <laughs> yep. and you go, oh, that was 250 years. And then you stop and you go, well, how long has our country been around? Mm. Oh, isn't that fascinating? 
and even on a personal level. Yeah. Oh, I've been yeah. off the rails for Much the last quicker. week. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 It's a washing yeah. machine relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I remember learning about this in Bible college, but the theology of uh, Felix Culpa, which is just Latin for fortunate fall, and it's exactly what that cycle is, right? It's it's a fortunate thing that we cannot be God because we get the blessing of God, right? And we get a God that isn't reminding us of how much we need him or saying, you're so lucky to have us. He reminds us that he's God with grace, right? Over and over again. Yeah, I saw you for 40 plus years trying to be me and you couldn't do it. So then you needed me. And then once I blessed you, you wanted to be me again. And I think that's what's so cool about the Bible as well as you see like these characters who do go back and forth in this cycle and God's never like, all right, I'm done. I've done it too many times. You're out. Right. He says, no, like I have grace upon grace upon grace. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, totally. And and what's interesting about that is God, I, I, I'm with you. I don't think God's like in this position where he's needing yes. our praise. But I think a, a very important piece to what you said, though, mm -hmm. is is who we are. Yeah. We were literally designed to praise him. Yeah. That's how we yeah. function mm -hmm. best. Yeah. Yep. And when you've got that understanding, it's life changing. Yeah. yeah. I think that, you know, uh, brings up one of those things that that I, as I was concluding the message that in the last three days came to me was my sin is too great. Mm -hmm. But God says yeah. his grace is greater still. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and that's kind of how those things come together. Yeah, so good. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Um, well, we are approaching the thirty-minute mark, so I would love to wrap things up. Unless you guys have anything else you want to chat about, I know we kind of indulged ourselves in the rabbit trails, but I think it was a good conversation. <laughs> I think it was a good rabbit trail. <laughs> so. I'll tell you, we got just enough time, I think, yeah. for a uh, shout out to next week because Allison's going to be talking about. Ruth. Yep. Uh, hey. And changes. Yep. And man, talk about a but God thing <laughs> there, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, she gets married to and and loses her husband and yeah. but God, and it's just a great story. So mm -hmm. uh, so good. I think I have a chance to just. And I think that'd be a really good follow up for the question I had, where you're going. What about what if I'm in a place where I'm looking for a but God moment? Come yes. find, come come here about Ruth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come here about Ruth because Naomi, she, I mean, right, she was so down on herself for that. Yeah. She calls herself, don't call me Naomi. I'm I'm now bitter. I'm just so <laughs> bitter for the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, so. It's a good comparison. It's a great comparison yes. about then so how good. God shows up. And in her case, we don't even see her asking him. Yeah. And the, uh, that relates to what Hayden was talking about. He, mm -hmm. She didn't even, we don't hear her saying, God, you've got to change my circumstances. Mm -hmm. I, I moved to this country. My husband dies. Both my sons die. And uh, and now I'm going to try try and go back just because out of desperation, kind of. Yeah. And and but God. So you're right. They'll have to come so Sunday good. and hear about so that. So good. Well, we still have more changes to go through. That is <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening or watching the follow-up podcast. And we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.